Hello there and welcome to this Karlam Cymru revision session for GCSE Digital Technology. My name is Meredith Jones and I'm a digital technology teacher at Ysgol Maesa Gwendraith in the Gwendraith Valley. In this session, we're going to be looking at topic 3.1 for the Unit 1 exam, which is digital communication methods. Okay, let's jump in then. So, this topic is going to include a lot of common sense, a lot of stuff that you already know about. So, if questions come up on digital communication me methods, um, you know, I think you should be pleased to see it on the exam. Uh, if you if you click to go to the next page and a question com comes up about email, then you know you should be pretty confident that you can uh, make some good points and pick up some marks. Okay, so um, let's start off with email. Okay, now. Email is something you, you're probably familiar with. You've probably got your own personal email account that you use for online shopping or for signing up for social media accounts and so on. But of course, here in Wales, we've all got a hub account. So we've all got an email account through Outlook with our hub address as well. So I'm sure you've got plenty of experience of using email. Now, if you need to speak about the advantages of email, um, what you need to do is remember that we're comparing email to what used to be the norm, which was sending letters in the traditional post, okay, sending it by mail. So we've got that highlighted there in the first paragraph. So if you're having to think of advantages of email, maybe that's a bit difficult on its own, but if you think of the advantages of email compared to the traditional post, then all of a sudden all the all the advantages become super clear and easy to pick out, okay? The first one that's listed here at the bottom of the first paragraph is the fact that um, email allows you to communicate with anyone who's got an email address and an internet connection anywhere else in the world, okay? There's nowhere is off limits for email. Um, you know, thinking about the things that are going on in the world right now and conflicts and wars, you know, you wouldn't really be able to trust that a letter that you send by post is going to get to anywhere. Whereas if you send an email to somebody in one of those parts of the world, as long as they've got an internet connection and an email address, then they should receive that message. Okay, the next advantage listed here, the beginning of the second paragraph, which is probably the first one that we'd have all thought of, um, is that emails can be sent very quickly. Okay, now... Um, be careful, don't use the word instantly, um, because there is, a, there is a delay with emails. It's a few seconds, it's nothing major, but um, it's not instant, okay? So if you're speaking about, um, if you're using this as an example of, a, of an advantage of email, make sure that you use the term very quickly, okay? Or you could say almost immediately, or just to say they take a few seconds, um, but don't say instantly. OK, so that's obviously a major advantage because, you know, the traditional post takes at least a day if we're using first class or longer um, if we're using second class stamps. Also, of course, emails can be sent 24 hours a day, 365 days a year, um, whereas the post, um, you know, that you don't get post on a Sunday, uh, etc., and then the final paragraph, this is another one where we could maybe accidentally not pick up some marks. Uh, be careful that you don't say that emails are free uh, to send, okay? Um, they are, well, it says here, relatively cheap, but I'd go further than that and say that they are extremely cheap, okay? They are incredibly cheap. They are very, very cheap to send. Um, so don't say that they're free because, of course, you do need to pay for your internet connection somehow and your device, uh, and, and the power to run all of those things. But certainly compared, again, with sending a letter by post, um, emails are, you know, obviously cheap. Um, this time of year, it's, it's uh, if, don't know what time of year you're watching this, but it's coming up to Christmas right now when I'm recording it. And I remember back when I was a boy, um, my family, you know, we'd, we'd send a load of Christmas cards by post to friends and family um, that didn't live close to us. Um, and I'm thinking now, you know, we don't do that. We, we, we don't do that at all, myself anymore. Um, but if we did, you know, a first-class stamp is around a pound, so you, you'd be paying a pound per letter to send. 
um, which, you know, if you're sending 50 letters, that, that's a lot of money when you add up the stamps and, of course, the price of the cards and the paper and the envelopes and all of that stuff. Okay, so emails are much cheaper. Okay, what else then? Social networking websites and apps. Okay, so, you know, you, you should be able to speak about this quite confidently, yeah, because who knows more about social networking websites and apps than uh, teenagers. Um, so you are the experts at this. Um, but make sure that you are able to explain clearly um, the types of things that these are used for, for communication. Okay, and don't get too specific. Don't don't um, don't get drawn into speaking about specific apps. Okay, Let, make sure that you can kind of talk generally about all social media. Um, and this description here is short and it's really good. So these apps are used to build social networks or social relationships. So uh, building a social network means obviously I'm going to find people that I actually know. Um, on these apps, okay, and I'm going to become friends with them virtually as well as in real life. But then, of course, you 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 become friends with friends of friends um, on social media, and then also there you can see the the second highlighted section there. You'll you'll come into contact and build connections and networks with people who maybe you don't know in in real life, um, but you share the same interests or activities. Um, with them, so you you become part of the same community as them online. And then um, something that I use uh, social media for is is just getting back in touch with um, friends that I haven't seen for you know twenty thirty years, um, finding old school friends, seeing what they're up to, send them a message maybe once a year, just checking in. Um, that's a big part of it as well. The older you get, the more you'll uh, use social media to keep in touch with people you don't actually see um, day to day anymore. Okay, the next one is blogs. Now then, I think blogs is a really interesting one to speak about, um, but it's one that um, my students tend to find uh, a bit difficult to talk about. Okay, so let's let's have a chat about blogs and what a blog is. So a blog is a website. So you you wouldn't have a blog on a social media app. I wouldn't set up a blog on Facebook or I wouldn't set up a blog on Instagram. Okay, If I wanted to set up a blog, I would create a website for that blog. Okay, So if I wanted to make a blog on um, making coffee, I'd, I'd, I'd get set up a website, um, meredithscoffee.com. Great. Now, on this then... I'd be able to post like an online diary of my journey, um, making coffee, trying different brands of coffees, trying different machines, different brewing methods. Can you tell that I'm a coffee geek? So I'd then be able to post um, diary entries, um, you know, as regularly as I want. Um, and those usually then would include um, some text that I've written. Um, but also they'd, they'd almost always include photos or videos. So if it's mainly a video blog, then that then is, is what we know as a vlog. And I'm sure you've heard the term vlogging and vloggers. Now, if you're vlogging, then those videos will usually be uploaded to a video platform, usually something like YouTube or TikTok. But vloggers will almost always also have a blog so then they'll embed their vlog videos into their blog posts, okay? And then underneath each blog post, you've got an area where um, visitors to the blog, to your website, are able to sign in and comment and have a kind of discussion. So with a blog, it's basically a, a kind of an online diary based around usually an interest or a person's thoughts. And it allows the users and visitors to have a kind of mini social network on your blog. Okay, let's move on. Instant messaging. So there's a lot of different ways to uh, send instant messages, as we know. Okay, um, now 
I think whenever I see these questions and the way that WJC write about instant messaging, they, to me, appear to be thinking about WhatsApp and the way that WhatsApp works. Okay, So although there's loads of different apps um, that we can talk about when we talk about instant messaging, um, I think if you've got a question about it, you need to put WhatsApp into your mind. All right. So instant messaging allows the user to send messages between two or more people in real time over the internet. Okay. So here's where it's different to email. When you click send, it appears immediately uh, with the other users that are part of that group chat. People use instant messaging to chat with friends, family, colleagues, and to make new friends. Now then, this is an important point. At the bottom here, instant messaging is very informal and it tends to convey information very quickly. Instant messaging is, you know, where we see a lot of emojis being used, GIFs, memes, photos, voice notes, and it's really informal and it's a lot of fun. Um, but, you know, later on in the video, we'll be speaking about um, the use of digital communication for business and, and for work purposes. And instant messaging usually isn't uh, the most appropriate way to communicate with colleagues. Okay. Video conferencing. Well, you know, we've been through the pandemic, so we know all about uh, video conferencing, don't we, guys? Um, it's a live video meeting between two or more people in different locations using video-enabled devices. Okay, that's, that's common sense. We all know that. It allows a large number of people to meet and collaborate face-to-face, -face, but remotely by, and here's what you can transfer. You can transfer sound, obviously, um, voices, uh, video from your webcam, uh, but you can also have text. You can have a chat um, which goes alongside a video call, and then you can also um, transfer presentations in real time over the internet. Now, I'm actually using a video conferencing app right now uh, to record this presentation for you, okay? And uh, as you can see, you can hear my my voice. So there's the sound, but the video uh, of my webcam, hi. And then you've also got uh, this presentation, these slides that I've prepared. You can see these as well, okay? So what we're doing right now is an example of video conferencing. The only difference, of course, is that I've done this um, beforehand. Uh, you're not on this call live with me, um, but quick plug, you know, we will be having a live session before long. Check the Carl Am Cymru um, website for the dates and times of the live session. And it'll be exactly the same as this. The only difference will be that um, more people will be able to be on the call. Okay. And as you know, uh, you could even, uh, we won't be doing that in the Carl Am Cymru sessions, but you, you'll usually be able to see everyone's video that's on the call, not just the one presenter as we've got on this setup. Okay, onwards we go. Here's an example of a question, okay? Now, it's actually the second half of a question, um, and it's because the first half of the question is to do with um, business methods, which we're going to speak about next, okay? So, uh, Nick is a TV producer from Belgium. He's living in Wales for three months to work on a new TV project. Okay, and then question two, see here. It doesn't matter that we've skipped question one. Okay, we'll see that later on. Um, but question two asks, illustrate two different digital communication methods that Nick could use to keep in touch with his family and friends. Okay, so what a lovely question. Four marks. So there's two digital communication methods, four marks. So we're obviously getting two marks for each uh, method. So how are we going to get those two marks? Well, I think it's quite easy to work that out. We're going to get a mark for naming the digital communication method. And then we're going to get the second mark if we uh, can explain um, or give examples of the types of things that Nick can do with those methods. Okay, so let's talk about some examples. Now, really, you could list any two of all those methods that we've just been through. And that'd be fine, okay? Um, so you could, for example, say, um, for the first for the first one, you could say, Nick could use uh, social media apps, full stop. That's gonna get you a mark, 
Okay, to get the second mark there, then you'd have to say uh, Nick could use social media apps um, in order to um, share his travels in Wales onto um, a group that he's joined on Facebook about traveling in Europe, something like that. Okay, or um, he could post photos onto his onto his feed. Uh, for his friends and family to to see what he's up to, and they can comment and and like and share his images, something like that. Okay, so that's that's really easy. And then the second communication method, you know, it could be any of the others. It could be instant messaging, uh, in order to send private messages between his uh, close group of friends and uh, share voice notes and send send video clips of uh, the cool things that he's seen. Uh, whilst he's in another country. You could, you could talk about that. You could talk about email. You could talk about video conferencing. Um, you know, we, you've got loads of options, haven't you? Okay, cool. So that question's all right, isn't it? Now then, let's go on then to the next type of question that you could get. So the next thing that you could need to speak about is... Um, I've just noticed that uh, that that suit is hiding a word there. Okay, uh, the uh, the presentation that will be uploaded with this will not have um, the elbow of a suit hiding hiding a word as that one is. Okay, uh, but it's fine. It's just um, it it it's just the word timetable, isn't it? So we're okay. All right. Um, now then, you could get questions now about asking. What would be the best ways for for somebody to communicate digitally for business or work? Okay, so you can see um, that first question that we saw there was all about Nick getting in touch with his friends and family. So now we're looking at um, sometimes the same uh, methods, but this time we're looking at it from a work or from a business point of view. Okay, so the first one we got there is video conferencing, and this really works exactly the same way as um, as video conferencing does um, for personal use. Okay, um, if you want to put a business slant on it, you'd say that you know people would previously have to maybe travel to the office in order to have meetings, and now they can just do it remotely uh, using video conferencing, which is you know saves money for the business, saves everyone's time, uh, it's better for the planet. Um, etc. Um, so that's video conferencing, right? So teleworking. Now teleworking is maybe a new word for you. Um, so it basically just means remote working or working from home. Okay, or it doesn't have to be from home, but it could be from a kind of a shared workspace or that type of thing. But it means um, workers not having to go to a specific office place or to a place of work to do their job, that they can use the um, speed of the internet to allow them to work fle more flexibly. Um, and the idea really is from home, isn't it? But remotely is an important word there. Okay, emailing then. Uh, well, bit, you know, email is really the king um, in, in work situations. Um, you know, I check my personal email kind of in the morning and then maybe again in the evening. But when I'm in work, my email tab is permanently open. Okay. It is the one way that we uh, communicate most of all um, in work. And, and, and also that's true in business. Okay. Why then? Well, it's, it's the most formal method of digital communication. Okay, if you if you receive an email from somebody, um, it if it's written professionally, it will appear um, a professional and it look official. Also, of course, emails allow you to keep track of um, messages you've received, but also messages you've sent. It'll also um, keep uh, a note of the date and time that messages are sent and a list of who it's been sent to. You can even put things like read receipts on emails, um, which lets you know when somebody's read it. Um, so, you know, email has a lot of built-in tools which help us to um, work professionally uh, and also kind of keep track on 
um, messages and who's seen what and when they were sent. Now, email, though, if you're working with a big group of people, can get out of hand um, because email isn't really set up for um, group conversations. Okay, uh, If you want to send a message to a load of different people and you don't really want to reply back from them all, then email is fine. If you want to have a conversation back and forth just between you and one other person, email is also fine. But if you want to have a group conversation, it, that can get quite untidy by email. Um, you know, you'll have a load of messages in your inbox and they'll all be separate. Um, so, And sometimes you can kind of lose the thread of the conversation. So that's why uh, apps like Slack um, have come into the marketplace. So Slack is an app which basically tries to recreate the kind of WhatsApp instant messaging experience, but in a business um, environment. Okay, so you can have group chats um, within Slack, but because it's uh, Slack, people then use it um, from a, with a different mindset. They don't go in there thinking, "All right, okay, let's 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 put an emoji on the end of every message I send, or let let's throw throw this GIF in to see what people think about it." You know, people behave more professionally on business apps like Slack, although they work very similarly to instant messaging apps like WhatsApp, because it's designed for work, people think twice about sending things. They think, right, is this appropriate? Is this the best place to put it, etc. Okay. Right, so you could then get a question on this. So here's the first half of the Nick question, okay? So here we go. We know that Nick's in Wales working on a TV project for three months. So this was question one after that, okay? Illustrate two digital communication methods that Nick could use to communicate with the main office in Belgium. So how can Nick get in touch with the main office in Belgium? So, you know, I think if I ever get a question about work communication methods, email is definitely the, the first thing I'd be, I'd be speaking about here. Okay, definitely would be the first thing that I'd be speaking about. And then after that, maybe you'd be able to talk about, um, app. you know, you could say an app like Slack um, to, to keep in touch with the team and um, discuss things in real time. Or you could talk about video conferencing, to so have a video call with his, um, Nick could have a video call with his co-workers in Belgium discussing the project. Um, they could see and hear each other uh, in real time. So, What's important here, of course, is remember that this, this part of the question, which is four marks, is linked to that first slide of questions that uh, I showed you, which is another four marks. Now, you wouldn't be able to use email for this question and for the other question, okay? Even though it's true, you could use, you, you could send an email to your work colleagues and you could also send an email uh, to your friends and family. You're not going to get the marks twice for um, giving the same point, okay? So you need to make sure that you've got four different communication methods between those two questions, okay? So the final um, type of question that you could get uh, for this topic in the exam is about the methods of communication that are used to promote. Um, so this basically means promotion, and marketing, advertising, they all mean the same thing. It's all just advertising, really, okay? It's showing you stuff, trying to get you to buy stuff, okay? That's what this is. So um, we need to then look at um, two, really, main methods of promotion, okay? And the two main methods of promotion digitally is email and social media. So how do online shops promote to us via email. So think about um, an online shop that you've bought from uh, in the past. And I'll just think of one now. Right, okay, so I've bought from this shop. So now that I've bought from this shop, I'm obviously on their mailing list. What kind of emails do I receive from that shop? Okay, well, if I bought a t-shirt, then I know that within about a week of buying that t-shirt, 
Um, I might get a customer service email checking. Are you happy with it? Give us a rating. Give us some feedback on your purchase. As one type. Okay. Next type of email I might get is, uh, hey, hope you like your t-shirt. Why not have a look at these three other t-shirts, which are quite similar to the one you bought? Customers who bought your t-shirt usually ended up buying one of these. Okay, so it'll show me similar things to what I've already bought. I'll also get, in January, guaranteed, I'm going to get a load of emails from shops that I bought from telling me what's in the January sale. Okay, so um, annual sales, general sales emails. That's the third third type. Fourth type, um, they're also, if I haven't bought from them for a while, maybe they're going to be like, right, this guy, he bought from us, sent him some emails, he hasn't been back. What can we do to get him back? Okay, here's what you do then. You usually get an email saying, hi there, we noticed you haven't been with us for a while. Um, why not use the code um, welcome back 10 to get 10% off your order um, and this this um, this code, this discount code is valid for the next three days. Okay, so discount codes, that's another type of email you get. So you can see there's a load of different types of emails that we receive. And, you know, if you get a question asking you about those, how, how um, email is used to promote, um, how do businesses use email to promote, then you can just list those different types of promotion emails that you receive. Okay, so that's a nice question. The other one then is social media. How do how is social media used um, to promote? Okay, well, so let's think about that. Um, we know that we get adverts on our social media. So how do we get those adverts on our social media? How do our social media apps decide which ads to show us? Okay, so. And again, if you think of it like that, you, we can go through the obvious answers. Okay, when we sign up to a new social media app, we'll usually give them information about our age, our gender, our location, maybe some of our interests. So they're just going to build a really quick, broad demographic picture of us. Okay, like a rough drawing. Okay, this is, we've got a new user and it is kind of this type of person. And then they'll start showing you general ads targeted at people of your age and your gender from your location. So that's the first type. Um, they'll also, social media then, will track the things that you like and the groups that you join and the hashtags that you use and the hashtags that you subscribe to and the people that you follow. And then they'll start building up a more detailed picture of who you are and what your interests are. And then they'll start showing you more targeted ads based on your actual activity on the app. That's two ways we've spoken about. The third way that um, businesses can target um, uh, promotion is just by the app that you're on. Okay, It's just a fact that TikTok has got a younger demographic than Facebook. Okay, So if I want to sell... You know, think of something boring that your folks uh, might be interested in buying. Okay, like, I don't know, um, getting, a, getting a new tarmac or right? double glazing, <laughs> double glazing. Okay, you're not going to see double glazing adverts on TikTok. Why? Because the majority of people who use TikTok are young people who aren't interested in buying double glazing. Okay, so... That's one way that businesses use social media um, for promotion is they'll just say, right, let's run this ad on TikTok, okay? Because it's something that appeals to teenagers. Loads of teenagers are on TikTok. Let's just chuck it on there. Okay, so I think that's, what we, I, think, I think we're up to three. I think that's three methods there. Okay, then let's talk about some more specific ways. Uh, influencers. So, Brands and businesses will pay social media influencers, kind of online celebrities. Why am I telling you what influencers, influencers are? You know better than I do. They'll pay them. They'll do a brand deal. They say, right, look, Joe Wicks, you are a very famous fitness man. Uh, here's a big pot of money. Can you tell everybody how amazing these trainers I sell are? 
and give them a link to the shop uh, page. Okay, and um, then if if Joe Wicks t- agrees to the brand deal, uh, you know he's gonna then speak to all of his followers, and most of Joe Wicks' followers are interested in keeping fit. So that's that's basically a direct line. You are paying an influencer to get a direct line to their set of followers, okay? And usually an influencer's followers are going to have a specific set of interests. So that's influencers. You can speak of that. Then let's look about talk about cookies, okay? Whenever we go on a website, it'll ask us, hey, we use cookies. Is that okay? And we go, yeah, whatever, man. We click okay. So what we're actually click saying, yeah, whatever, to there is we're telling that website that it's allowed to tell all of our social media apps that we've been there. And that's why if you go onto an online shop and then go to one of your uh, social media apps, you are going to see adverts for that online shop straight away. Okay, that's cookies at work there. So cookies tracking our um, activities uh, across all of the internet, passing that in, um, passing that information back to our social media apps so that we can receive targeted ads. Okay, now then, question. You can see here, we've just been speaking exactly about this. Okay, Businesses can target new and existing customers. They can use a variety of methods in today's digital world. Email can be used by businesses to promote and market their products and services. Identify how. So how can email be used to promote and market products and services? And we just spoke about that. Okay, what are the different ways that different emails that you receive from an online shop that you've bought from before or shown an interest in before? Okay, and you just list four examples of those emails. Sales emails. Um... Emails telling us um, there's new new stock has arrived. Emails telling us, um, showing us similar things to what we've bought before. Emails checking that we're happy with our purchase. Okay, here we go. You, we've just spoken about it. Okay, and then our final slide of questions is the same thing, but this time for social media. Social media can be used to promote products and attract new custom for a business. Explain the different ways. We do the same thing again. Okay. We've just been through them, listing all those different ways that social media um, promotes things to us. Can you just explain them one at a time? When you join a social media app and you give your age, location, and gender, they will use that to show you targeted ads. And that's that's a mark. When you then start um, following, liking, joining groups, and interacting on the social media app, they'll then show you even more targeted ads, okay? I'm not going to go through them all again because we've just been speaking about them. All right then, guys, that is it, okay? That's it for our session. That's our third session on communication methods. Please join me on the live session. Check when the date is. It's coming up soon. Um, We're going to be having a recap of these three sessions, but then if you've got any questions, please pop them in the chat, um, but also, if you've got any questions about your unit two or your unit three coursework, okay, if you're in the middle of your coursework right now and you've got questions about either the actual practical stuff or some of the written tasks that are, go around the coursework, then get on the chat, send in your questions. I'd love to hear from you. Okay, thanks very much for joining me on this revision session. I hope it's been useful for you, and I'll see you again on another one in the future. Diolch yn fawr, hwyl fawr.